Yes, it's me. I'm Christian. Hi. Um, welcome to a pork like tutorial, a rogue like tutorial. Um, so, we are uh, working on this uh, function that generates a beautiful dungeon, and so far, it's not a bad function. We have some uh, rooms. And we have some twisty hallways in between, as I like to call it, meatballs and spaghetti. And now the, the, we're gonna do an ugly mess because we want to make sure that all the spaghetti is connected to the meatballs. <laughs> I guess the analogy breaks down now. We are just like overcooking the meatballs and spaghetti until they become a mush. Um, so how are we going to connect the individual areas with each other? Might be a question that you might be asking yourself. Um, it's, it's a bit weird, right? Um, so we already have a, a function that kind of does something that might help here, but actually doesn't. So we already have a function, for example, that um, you might remember when we did um, pathfinding, right? We did pathfinding. And the way we did pathfinding is we started at a given position and like we kind of like branched out from there, like we grew like a, like a bubble of distance, basically, uh, until we reached walls. Um, and that allowed us actually, we did like a little test there, allowed us to kind of like find, um, to figure out how far away you are from uh, from a target spot. But also it, um, it uh, kind of didn't fill the areas that weren't connected. And then, you know, we had this moment where we opened the door and then filled in that area with, uh, with content. So we're kind of gonna do this, kind of like a similar uh, approach here, but we're not gonna use that same function. We're gonna use a different function now. So, um, yeah. Um, generally, the procedure is going to be the following. We are going to first recognize the individual not connected areas. That's the very important part. We kind of some have to somehow flag the individual areas that are interconnected that are accessible to, uh, from, to one another. Um, so we're going to create, similar to the way we did the pathfinding function, we're going to create a helper array, an array of array, like a map that we lay on top of our, our tiles that helps us recognize uh, isolated areas. In each area, we'll get a number. There's gonna be area flagged with, with the flag one, another area is gonna be flagged with the flag number two, and so forth. Once we have those areas ready, they are all, uh, inter uh, they are all recognized. We are going to be looking for walls, for individual wa walls that, if broken, would connect two separate areas to each other. And we're going to create, again, a similar pattern that we had before. We're going to create a candidate list of possible doors that would do all of these things. We're going to pick a random candidate that will, and that will melt two areas with each other. And we're going to repeat the process until there are no more doors that would connect two areas with each other. If at this point there are still multiple areas, we're going to have to see. But the way our maps are, they are you look at our maps, they are so tight, right? And we always do like this, this process, this uh, worm function um, that carves, you know, until it cannot carve anymore. And we have like this other function that looks for possible spots to place a worm. So the way this actually works is you, it, it would be difficult to, to have an isolated area. It's actually not really that, that possible to create areas which are isolated. It's just not possible. Or if it is, it would be very rare. So we're not going to worry about too much about maybe the room, as there's just going to be a room somewhere that is not accessible. It's going to be fine. <sighs> Long process. Um, so let's, let, let, let's start right away. So this is going to be a new step. This is no longer a maze. This is no longer spaghetti. This is going to be a new step in our, our generation. And kind of like the SIG is, by the way, the SIG and B comp. That's not really part of the maze, that's kind of like part of a toolbox, but you know, whatever. So this, this is going to be called doorways. Um, generally, we're going to start making the map more interconnected until it's cool. Okay? So we're going to call a function called place flags. Just going to place the flags. So in this function, we are going to do something very similar to what we did before. And that is going to be going to loop through the entire map. <laughs> and you can see we're doing, we're looping through the entire map quite a lot. And so we're going to maybe at the end of this, we're going to do like an episode where we think about, theorize about possible optimizations that you can do. That's not going to be part of this um, tutorial series, but kind of gives you like an outlook of what to work on, continue working on if you were to continue working on this. 
uh, we're gonna be like curve. That's gonna be the current flag, and we're gonna start the flags at one. The first one the flag that we're gonna place is gonna be the one. So we're gonna do something like if is walkable, if it's walkable. Um, X, comma Y. And and so this is now we actually have to create this flags array. So flags, we're gonna just call it flags. It's gonna be our flag map, basically. I could call it flag map, but it's okay. And it's gonna be blank map. And we're gonna fill it with zeros. So we know when, wherever there's a zero, we haven't set a flag yet. Uh, and so it's gonna be if it's walkable and blank map square brackets x square brackets y uh, equals zero. Okay, so now we have a tile that is walkable and it hasn't been filled with a flag yet. Then, now here is where we would take this area and start filling it with a flag, but just, just like to see if anything's working, because again, I'm getting nervous, man. Um, we're gonna say something like um, flags, flags, x, y equals uh equals curve current flag and then we we skip to we increase the current flag so the next flag that we're going to set is going to be a different one that's it um let's try this this should fill our our map with a rainbow coalition of flags every tile will have a different flag um, just to see if this works, uh, I'm gonna quickly just like temporarily here in the draw um, in the draw game function. I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna loop through everything, just the way we do is with a, with a, with a fog. And for every tile, I'm gonna draw a flag. So we're gonna go if um, flag flags x y is not equals one, uh, not equals zero. Um, then p set x times eight uh, plus three or something, and then y times eight plus six. I don't know. And then the color of the flag. Let's see how this works. It doesn't work at all. Blah. Um, the in blank map is a is not something that not something that exists. Oh, I called blank map, but I should it should be flags. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Uh, almost correct. Uh, the y position is not quite correct when we draw them. Just see here. Um, uh, y times eight plus five, because I want to just put them exactly where this one little dot in the sprite is. Okay. So you see now, uh, this function does exactly what we don't want to be doing. Well, actually, it does something wrong. It fills the entire map with with rainbow flags. But now what we want to do is actually instead of like filling it with uh, every tile with a different flag, we want to fill a tile with a flag. But then from there on, we want to kind of like make this flag grow. We want to see like from the tile that we set a flag, we want to actually see of, on all the neighboring locations if they're free. And all of the free locations, we're going to set uh, another flag. And of the neighbors of that flag, we're going to set another flag and so forth. So we kind of like want to set a flag, but then also let it grow. And so that's what we're going to call this. We're going to call this new function. It's going to be function uh, grow flag. Uh, we're going to call. We're going to put this in x y, and we're going to make this flag grow in this location. Grow flag. We don't need this anymore. Okay. New function. Grow flag x y. And then FLG for the flag. Okay, now what you're gonna see here is something that we did a lot of times. Again, we're gonna use our candidates. I like my candidates. Uh, we don't need that action. Just gonna do, do repeat until canned uh, hashtag canned equals zero. And here we're gonna go local canned. Um, actually, might do the local cant up here. Cant in uh, cant new. Mm -hmm. uh, like this. 
So, um, because we're gonna have um, why can't and can't new uh, for the same reasons we had candidates for um, we had like a very similar pattern here in the gameplay function. Uh, where was it? This map, calc dist, calc dist. That was the one uh, when we had <clears throat> can't new and can't. And at the end of the loop, um, we set the can to can't new. So we kind of like the way we did this is we're gonna look through all of the candidates that we have on our candidates list, and we're gonna um, look at all of the neighbors of those candidates and put the neighbors in the new array of new candidates. And the next step, we're gonna uh, we're, go we're gonna set those new array to the actual candidates list, and we're gonna repeat this process over and over again. And we do this so we can separate the current candidates from the candidates that will. Uh, that we go through on our next loop um, because if you mix them then that creates like all sorts of headaches where you know we're going through an array while we're growing that array and that's that's a very good idea okay so um can't new equals um, empty we're gonna start a new list of candidates and then we're gonna go go for c in can't do uh, in all can't And now comes something very familiar. We're gonna go for d equals one to four, and uh, do, and we're gonna look for all the neighbors of this one specific candidate, right? So we're gonna do, do something like um, local dx dy equals um, uh, c dot x. So with the x position of that candidate. Uh, maybe just to to, um, to show you what a candidate list looks like. So, so this candidate list e x equals x, y equals y, and that's why these are going to be underscore x and underscore y, uh, like this, right? So um, actually, this is not going to be it's going to be an array of arrays here. This is going to be the first entry in this array. Okay. So this is going to be the first candidate. The first candidate is going to be the actual start position of that flag, right? And so we can immediately here also maybe go something like um, flags. Um, oh, yeah, no, here. Flags, c dot x, c dot y equals flg. So we are setting the flag of all the candidates to the, to the flag. And then we're looking through all of the neighbors here. So, so maybe, <laughs> I guess I did it a bit backwards here. So um, let's see, dear x. So here, and d, and then cy, dear y. Again, all of this is already familiar territory. We did it multiple times already. Just looking through all of the neighbors. And then here we're gonna go if um, is walkable dx dy and if it's walkable that means it's also in bounds so we don't have to do the inbounds and flags dx dy is not equals flg then and in this case we're going to go add now the new list of candidates and a new entry, uh, and that's going to be x equals dx, y equals dy. Okay, so looping through all of the candidates, looking for walkable tiles around, uh, surrounding our candidates that don't have the flag that's supposed to grow set. We could go here and set, um, instead of the flg, um, not equals flg, we could check like if, if it's zero. That would be also fine, but if we do it not equals flg, we can reuse this fun function for another important step later on. You will see. Good. Okay. So at the end, what uh, only thing that's left, we're gonna go go canned the old list, uh, the actual, the current list of candidates will become the new list of candidates, like this. And if we realize that the new list of candidates was empty, then that means this function is over. Easy peasy, Fabrice. Let's try that. It worked. 
off the bat for the first time the function work without without me having to do anything so you can see now there's like individual um individual parts are kind of like separated from each other cool that's cool we did it we did the thing that we out, uh, were out to do so now our goal is to compare is to compare um, to, to find the, the places where we could break through to uh, make to merge two um, two errors with each other places where we can break through to merge two errors with each other so this is going to be yet another function now I mean this function is going to be ca called carve doors I'm going to call this carve door we could also call it connect flag, so it uses the same name. It's fine. It doesn't matter. Function. Are we ready? I think I think we're we should be ready. It's kind of like going to be a very similar process. Um, so again, we're going to do like a repeat and until. We're going to have. Here in this repeat, we're going to go um, local DRS. It's going to be empty. And we're going to repeat this process until we didn't find any good doors. This is not just doors. This is doors candidates. We could, I could use can't again, but I think it might be clear here. So if DRS, if hashtag DRS equals zero, then we're going to stop it. In fact, you know what? Let us... Let us not do the loop first. Let us just do go through this process once. Let us just highlight all of the, the things that could be candidates. Okay, so for x, let's go immediately underscore x, equals 0, 15, do, and then the same for y, and and. So we're loop, looping through everything, okay? So what is a what is a candidate for a door? Well, it clearly the tile has to be not walkable. So we're gonna go if not is walkable uh, x y. So now we're going to use our signature function, the function that, that generates signature. So we're going to go local sig equals uh, get sig x and y. We're going to use the signature to see if this is even a wall, if this is even something that divides two areas with each other, right? Um, How do I mean? So let, let, let's look at this. So the wall that I'm standing next to it, this part, bloop, this would be good. This is something that, that separates two areas, two empty tiles, right? So this would be something that, that can potentially be a door, but we don't know, we kind of have to figure out. Like this is the door, kind of door that we can carve. This area here underneath me, this part here, bloop, that wasn't a door, that wasn't separating two areas with each other, so it doesn't even make sense to check here, right? Because there is no other side that we are carving through. There is no other side that we are carving through, okay? So we kind of have to um, now check for, um, for signatures that would um, result us breaking through, kind of, kind of like the opposite to some extent to the worm function when we just wanted to identify tiles that wouldn't result in a breakthrough. But this time we want to find tiles that will result in a breakthrough. And not just any breakthrough, actually like a, like a legit good breakthrough, not like a diagonal awkward breakthrough, but you know, like a clean way through the rock, okay? Good, so we're gonna go something like, um, there's actually two ways of doing this. Like if you go through the math, and again, I, I did this, there's, did I do this? Trust me, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> um, there is two ways of doing this. Either it's like a horizontal wall and you can like break through there, and so it's gonna be an area above and underneath, or it's like a vertical wall and it's going to be an area right, left, 
and write from from that wall. Just like these two options are only available. If you if you actually you know sit down and I did on the paper and maybe maybe check some things. So um, and it's gonna not not even gonna require like an array the way we did this before. It's just like a very simple sim singular signature. So it's actually pretty easy to do this. So singular signature for both types. So for example, um, let's go bcomp sig. Okay. So, all right, so here's my, my smart book where I did the thing and looked, I, I did an illustration. So these are, let me see, oh, I'm always, it's always mirrored, everything is mirrored. Okay, so these are the two options here. And it's really easy. First of all, we, we realize that we actually don't care about the diagonals at all. So the last four characters are axes. We just care about the cardinal directions. We just care about the cardinal directions. So that's actually pretty easy. So it's going to be 0b and this is going to be the horizontal one. So this is going to be 1, 1 for left and right should be filled with, with walls. 0, 0 up and down should be empty. And then doesn't care about, about the next one. And then the mask is going to be 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. We do care about the first entries. We do care about the cardinal directions. We don't care about the diagonals. The diagonals are fine. Okay. Um, then, else if, then we do the same thing, but now this is for ver a vertical wall. And this is gonna be almost exactly the same thing, except it's one, one here and zero, zero here. It's pretty easy. So these are like the two different way, um, types of walls that we can have. And uh, notice that we don't actually see if the walls are connecting two different areas. We just like see if the walls are something that are, it's good to carve. And to see if this, um, this work correctly, we're gonna color them now into diff two different colors. Let's go like with maybe this, this might be like the pink one. Mm, I'm not sure if I like the pink one though. So the blue one for horizontal walls and pink ones for vertical walls, three and four, okay? So we're gonna go M set uh, X, Y, three, and M set X, Y, four, okay? It looks a bit um, colorful, but you can see it working, right? So every time we have a blue wall, we can break through to come to, it, it, it is a doorway and every time we have a pink wall we can also break through and it's a doorway and I think it's pretty much everywhere but look at, at for example at this guy here this wall right, right, right to me that's not a wall that would connect to areas right you could break through but you could also walk around there so that didn't actually connect to areas so that's something that we're gonna have to figure out now. But you can already see now that we know what kind of wall it is, we kind of know which flags we need to compare with each other. We just need to see, um, check the flag on one side of the wall and we have to compare it with the flag on the other side of the wall. That's all that we need to do. Okay, so let me do something like this. We're gonna create a bunch of variables here. Um, we just wanna save um, the locations of uh, the space on the one side of the door and the space of the other side of the door. We're just gonna save them in variables in x, x1, y1, x2, y2. So it, it, if the wall is horizontal, it's not horizontal, it's like, if it's like this, right? We're gonna go uh, x1, y1, x2, y2 equals. Uh, so if it's like this, the x position of those those two spaces that we need to compare with each other is going to be the same as, as x. So it's going to be x comma something x, right? And the y position is one tile is going to be y minus one and the other one is going to be y plus, plus one. Up, down. We don't need this anymore. Well, actually, we're going to keep this around. Mm, no, we're not going to keep this around. And so if we are, if the wall is like this, then it's going to be the other way around. The Y positions will remain the same. So where Y stays, 
But in one case, it's, we're gonna lo look at x uh, plus one. Any other case, we're gonna look at x minus one. So x plus one, x minus one. Not that hard. And then I, I've tried to figure out some kind of elegant way for this, but I haven't. So, so we're just gonna have, have like a variable that, that checks if we found a door. We call this found. And we're gonna do found equals false before we check for the door. And when we check for the door, we're gonna go found equals true. It's it's not elegant. And if you have like an elegant solution for this, let me know. It's, it's, it's just like a stupid variable. So after we did the signature checks, we just wanna say if found um, um, we're gonna we're gonna we need more variables, not enough variables. Flag one and flag two. So what we're gonna do is something is like if f1 equals flags um, uh, x1 uh, y1 and f2 is gonna be like we want to save already the flags in our in our variables. Okay just little stop here just to understand what is happening so we we um check if the in the signature of the of the of the current tile if that corresponds to something that would create a clean break something that we can break through from one uh, free space to another free space if that's the case we're saving the coordinates of that free space and then we put the flag number of that free space, of those two free spaces that, that are separated by this wall in F1 and F2. And so if we have like this little found variable that, that makes sure that this is actually a door. So if this is a door and, or if, if this is a wall that separates two spaces and F1 is not equals F2, that means this could be a door. And I'm gonna go, I'm gonna m set in this case uh, x y I'm gonna set it to two just so we can see if it actually recognizes the the walls correctly. Some problem here. Flex is flex wrong here? It's correct. I'm guessing the starting coordinates were not good. It actually wants us to have some good starting coordinates. Okay. One 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 one. Okay. This is bad. <laughs> this is bad. It didn't recognize anything. Uh, let me see. What is the problem? Um, let, let's just set all of them to two. Let's see how that works. Oh, okay. Some something weird is happening here. It, it seems like this entire code is not being executed somehow because this didn't execute correctly. Map set two, maybe maybe I was wrong here. No, it should be M, M set three. Maybe now. Aha, got it. Good. Let us look at the blue tiles here, at the blue walls. And you can see all of the blue walls are correctly identified, and from what I can tell, correctly identified as separating two neighboring areas, right? All of these were correctly identified. Let us run this again and let us seek for a situation where we have a wall, but it wouldn't actually connect to areas. Mm, there is one in the corner, but you can see it very well. So yeah, look, um, here above, like to the north of the character, you can see that there's like this little L shape that goes in this direction. Oh, wait a minute, it's, uh, uh, this direction, this kind of, no, it's not this direction, it's this, oh, Jesus. So it's this direction, this L shape, right? Or like inverted L shape. And you can see, you could conceivably carve from the, at the end of the L to the, to the upper part of the L, to the spiral there. But that wouldn't actually connect to different flagged areas with each other. So it didn't mark it as a, as a, as a door candidate. Instead, we are interested in things that actually make us go through, you know, from this brown area to this gray area. Uh, it didn't mark this uh, thick wall here because that's too thick. And even if we carve one tile in here, we'd still not break through all the way. So it didn't actually even bother with that one. Perfect. 
Good. So the only, only thing for us left to do is to actually make the door happen, like actually add to those doors. So that's why we had like this DRS thing happening here. We're gonna go add uh, DRS and then we're gonna have like the entry for the door. So it's gonna be X equals underscore X, uh, Y equals underscore Y. And something I might wanna save here is also the, the two flags. So flag one and flag two. So I'm gonna sort of go, this is bad. Now I want to kind of go underscore F here. I just want, I just really want, don't want the, the, the us to get confused about this. So let's make underscore F everywhere here. Um, right. So uh, in this object, I'm going to set um, F1 to flag one and flag two to underscore flag two. Okay. Right. And then once we're through this entire process, a lot of if and for like one, two, three, one, two, three, and that's gonna be, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot. Okay, then we're gonna go um, if um, hashtag DRS is greater than zero, then end. And then we're gonna go uh, local D equals uh, get rind DRS. We're gonna get a random entry from, uh, from our door candidates. And we're gonna go um, M set d dot x comma d dot y um i'm gonna put an empty tile there this one one but that's not all this is not all what we're also gonna do like this this tile um, is not doesn't have a flag so we're gonna set this flag in this tile because it was a wall so and walls don't get flags so we're gonna go flag flags dx dy equals and we're going to set it to f1 uh, d dot f1 we're going to put that that one of the two flags we're going to f pick randomly the first one we're going to put it in in the tile where the, the doorway was previously okay and then what, what we can do here is actually we don't need that we're going to just go grow I'm gonna just go grow flag. We have this function here, so why don't we? Why not? Why not using it? We're gonna go grow flag, uh, d dot x comma d dot y, and we know exactly which which flag to grow. F one. So just to reiterate real quick, we start at the location where the door was that we just carved through the like the the wall was where we carved through and we pick one of the two flags and we start using the same grow flag function from that point on and what that function will do is now it will ignore the room that has already one of those flags like the flag number one filled in but it will spread this one flag in this other room that we now broken through too so let's see how this works um there's a problem then, okay. So we seem to have broken, I think, through one of, hopefully you have bro broken through one of those. I'm not sure if we did. Oh yeah, now we can clearly see. Now we can clearly see how this hallway has broken into this room. And also the, the system already recognized that now this hallway and this room are part of the same area. Okay, so the only thing for us left to do is do put everything in the huge friggin' loop. Huge loop. So repeat. And here until um, hashtag DRS equals zero. Uh, until there is no any no doors anymore. just gonna repeat this entire process over and over again until all of the areas are connected and filled with the same area. Uh, this causes now a problem. Uh, so for some reason this, um, this is an infinite loop now. So let's see. Ah, I found a problem. So here, embarrassingly, I, I, an X was Y. <laughs> so let's try this now. 
Uh, okay, so this is this is now without the loop, and now let's try now with the loop. It worked. So the problem was um, it didn't save the coordinates of the door correctly, so it just randomly removed some door tile, and for, in our test, uh, it just like it just happened to work out. Uh, yeah, but now you can see like the entire area seems to be interconnected. Yes, it seems to be interconnected. So from here, I can walk in here. I can walk up here. I can walk in here, oops, uh, and then I can continue working here and here and down here, and I can go through every nook and cranny. Great, perfect. Our our job is done. Is this a good dungeon? No, it's a horrible dungeon. It's bad, but um, we are on our way to get there. So the next step is gonna make this dungeon even more interconnected. I don't like how badly interconnected this dungeon is. It's not well interconnected. Um, you, you can see that if we're going through this dungeon, it's always like this this kind of like snail type of dungeon where you, there's like this very long way and then you arrive here and there were at ne none, none of the points there, there was an interesting decision whether to go left and right. I mean here um, you see that when, oops, I always make, break the dungeon. You can see that we could have gone in here but that was like a dead end. So that didn't actually, that wasn't actually satisfying. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to find places where we can make this dungeon even more interconnected. But that's something that comes up in the next episode. Again, there's always a t-shirt shop that you can use, uh, they can get some t-shirts to uh, support this channel. There is uh, gonna be a link to our Discord channel which you should hang out at. And of course, as always, there's gonna be the code for today's episode as a Pico Pico 8 file. And with um, OMG Mog's help, it's gonna be, there's also a GitHub repository that you can also look into. See you in the next episode, guys. Bye-bye.